Here's how I painted my 3D kitbash Talarn Company Commander. This is my first time making a painting tutorial so please bear with me in case the focus doesn't seem 100% there. Filming is as much of an art as painting is. Things you need are Some brushes I use a big synthetic brush for all the base coating A smaller cheap brush you don't mind ruining for the metallic paints Another big brush for putting washes on Again, one you don't mind ruining And then a brush with a nice tip for the detail You'll also need a wet palette Mine is made with an old container, some sponges, and a piece of parchment paper. A wet palette keeps the paint well hydrated between painting sessions and gives you a good place to mix paints together. A piece of paper to dab your brush on is also key for removing excess water. Also I recommend some sort of holder for your mini. You can buy official mini handles or you can do what I do and use an old paint pot with some blue tack on it. I also recommend placing the mini on a little test base so you can paint it and the base separately and then place it on the base later. Just be careful not to use too much super glue. 3D prints can be pretty brittle and I've had feet break off when transferring the mini. After gluing the mini together and adding any extra bits like grenades and shoulder pads, prime with black, then do a zenithal highlight by spraying above with a brighter color. This can be done easily with spray paint or an airbrush. If you don't have either of those, you can base your mini in black and then dry brush, which basically means you get some paint on a brush, wipe nearly all of the paint off on the paper, then lightly brush across the mini, which makes the edges pop. For this paint job, you're going to need the main armor or accent color of your army, a variation of browns and tans, a white, black, then whatever you're going to use for your plasma color. You'll need some washes and some metallic paints. Now let's paint our primed and highlighted mini. First, I base the entire mini with a khaki color. Again, you can do this with a spray can, airbrush, or a brush. If you're feeling extra fancy, you can thin your paints more than normal during this step to try to have some of the zenithal prime show through. Next, go over the mini and pick out the different cloth and leather materials and paint them with various brown and tan colors that you have. I painted the boot wraps and backpack with Citadel's Rackharth Flesh. I painted the boots, packs and straps on his chest, and some of the packs on the backpack with model color flat brown. I also painted the sleeves with model color burnt umber. Then paint the sash the main color of your army's armor or accent color. My Talaran army uses Averland Sunset as their main color. I didn't worry too much about getting the paint on the arms and grenades because I go over them in the next step, which is taking some refractive green and brush over the grenades. After all the cloth and leather is done, I switch to my designated metallic color brush. I went in and did all the metal colors. I used Lead Belcher and Balthazar Gold. The backpack, buckles and buttons around the mini, the face and the arms were all coated in Lead Belcher. The turbine, grate, and shells on his backpack, the drum on his gun, and the little breathing apparatus thing on his face were all painted with Balthazar gold. Also, I went around the parts on the arm and put a little Balthazar gold on them as well. This creates a little bit of a rusty old effect and is good for adding visual interest in big metal areas. Next, I added a base coat of white to the power sword, trying to create very basic highlights. I'm working on the whole blending thing, but this is a good start for me. I also base coated the power orbs on his backpack with white. Next, base coat the head wrap with white. And then, with black or gray, paint the cable coming out of his mouth and going out of his arm. I also went ahead and painted the other cable near his head yellow. I ended up putting hazard stripes over this later, which could honestly have been done now too. Base coating is done. Now it's time to cover the entire model in Liquid Magic, aka Citadel's Agrax Earthshade. For areas that are pooling too much, clean your brush, dry it on a paper towel, and then touch the puddles with the tip of the brush. This soaks up the extra wash and helps avoid getting a big wash stain on your mini. 
Fully let that dry for about 30 to 40 minutes. And then you can get to detailing. As you can see here, I already went over the cloth with my original base coat and color of model color German beige World War II, avoiding the deepest recesses. Basically paint everywhere the washes didn't darken too much. Then add a little white or off-white, I used buff, to your base color and start highlighting the cloth. It's similar to the step before, but more selective with where you want to paint over. Also, don't be afraid to try stippling and dotting around to create a bit of texture. I repeat that step with more white and buff mixed in to create even more contrast in the mini. Repeat as many times as you want. I continue by going over all the leather and cloth colors, starting with the original base color and then adding more contrast with white or buff. For the head wrap, highlight with a mix of white and buff. Keep mixing and adding until you're happy with the color. I like making a brighter head wrap for my HQ units in my army. Now that the cloth and leather are completely done, it's time to add rust to the metal. This is one of my favorite steps. I use Typhus Corrosion and Rise of Rust to do this. I use my imperfect dedicated metals brush to apply the Typhus Corrosion. I like to apply a healthy amount then quickly clean my brush in water, then wipe it on a towel, and then feather the edges out to create a more seamless transition. Apply this to wherever you think would look good. It's a great way to add detail to areas where for whatever reason your print didn't have a lot of detail or where your mini has imperfections. After your typhus corrosion rust is dry, sort of dry brush a bit of the rise of rust on those parts. This technique can also mess up a brush, so don't use a brush you like. Get a little rise of rust on the brush, wipe most of it off onto a paper towel, then dry brush, or in my case, scrape, along the top of the typhus corrosion. It should be very subtle or you'll end up with rust that looks like cheddar cheese. If it's too bright, go over the orange areas with Agrax Earthshade. Now take a bright silver metallic paint and highlight all the metal, including the bronze areas. Highlight the grenades with the base color mixed with white, and then go over the sash with Averland Sunset. Also, paint the inside of the eyes with Averland Sunset. I did this off camera because it was hard to film and be accurate at the same time. Then wash all the yellow areas with Cassandra Yellow. Since you have to wait for the wash to dry, I darken the armor shoulder pad with another wash of Agrax. Now do what you did with the cloth on the sash and eyes. Start with your base color, then slowly add more and more white as you highlight. Next, paint your plasma color onto the vents in the gun and the orbs on the backpack. I used blue-green. I find this goes well with the yellow of my army. Glazing is a great way to easily highlight and shade parts using a zenithal highlight. Thin down the plasma color with water or glaze medium to make a colored glaze. Test it on a card to see if it's thin enough to go over color without completely obscuring it. Glaze over the power sword. As you might have guessed, we're going to do some extra highlights on these parts too. Keep adding white to your plasma color to add hot spots. Use the bright areas under the glaze to help know where you want to highlight on the sword. Also, using almost pure white, edge highlight along the end of the sword. This emphasizes the edge of the sword and helps it look sharp. Don't be afraid to get pretty close to pure white on areas that are supposed to be glowing. Add some black hazard stripes to the yellow cables painted earlier. You might want to do this before highlighting the head wrap to avoid making a black mark on the head wrap. Then use a gray color to highlight all of the black cables. As one of the last steps that helps a lot, we're going to add some object source lighting. Take some of the blue-green glaze that we used on the power sword and go along the model and glaze on some blue where you think the sword would be casting light. Make a new glaze if the one you used before has dried up too much. 
It's better to make a glaze a little too thin as you can keep adding thin layers and build up the opacity. Much like we did in the washing stage, you can use your brush to soak up or move around areas where the glaze is pooling too much. This step is a lot simpler than people think and really levels up the paint job. Finally, black line the mini. This is taking a black wash or ink and running it along areas where you don't have much detail. It helps visually separate parts of the mini. For example, the respirator part of the face mask was getting lost, so I put some black wash around it. Carefully take your mini off the base, glue it to the new one, and you're done. I would love to hear your feedback and any other tutorials you might be interested in down in the comments below. Like and subscribe if you found this helpful. Alright, bye bye